then there was an internship mm -hmm. and in the internship of course um i needed to get a place right and 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 you and i know mm. i mean even as early as then mm. it wasn't really easy mm -hmm. to get and social capital mm. um it really did help right because uh, my father's friends mm -hmm. um uh, happened to be um his name was doctor is doctor karoga mm -hmm. happened to be the chair of the institute of economic affairs mm -hmm. And so, because it was just an internship, mm. he requested that um, I do it there, and they accepted. Mm. So I went in there, mm. and I was very shocked at how research, academic research, or doing research for my assignments mm -hmm. was very different mm. from the kind of research they were doing. Because then you apply that research to real life issues, mm. and I really didn't know how to interface mm. those two. Mm. And so I think obviously internship isn't just for purposes of going out there mm. and just getting it done mm -hmm. to tick that box mm. it really is so essential mm. because it really is your bridge to really trying to put these things together mm. so that the academics mm -hmm. and this real life issue mm. also is uh, problems that you're intending to solve in the workplace mm. are actually interfacing mm. so the challenge was i wasn't an economist mm -hmm. and here i am in an intensely you know institute economics economic affairs, yes economic yeah. research mm -hmm. and policy analysis institution so mm. i felt like a fish out of water yeah but what i really appreciate about that experience is mm. that there wasn't judgment mm -hmm. um, there wasn't that pressure that you should know after all you're a graduate mm -hmm. i i went into an environment that provided opportunities for me to learn mm. and and i i implore any organization that is operating because sometimes i think now that I'm in the world of work, it's mm. very easy for organizations to get people mm. to accomplish their goals. Mm. And people say, that's why I'm paying you. Mm. But there is value in, yes, meeting that goal with allowing people to come in and to learn. Mm. And that's what IEA was for me. Mm. I found people who are very gracious. The smartest people I know mm. were in that organization. Mm. But they provided a platform for me to just be in spaces where I could learn. Mm. So as early on as being an intern, I was hanging out with members of parliament oh, because wow. of the kind of work they were doing. Wow. Traveling a lot mm. to see the country. Mm. Um, my first assignment as was an intern. Um, as an intern mm. was to work with the person who headed what was called the Futures Program. Mm -hmm. And so the program, so they had done a research to look at Kenya in 10 years mm -hmm. and see what can Kenya become. Mm -hmm. It was a very fascinating project mm -hmm. and so i was in sort of like in the team that was trying to disseminate that around the country so by the time you join in the yeah the the the, the findings from this research had have been, come out have come out yeah yes yeah and and so i'm just getting in as i finish i'm mm -hmm. getting into the publishing bit of it mm -hmm. so i started understanding the mechanics of you know layout design mm -hmm. uh you know uh, publishing mm -hmm. or you publishing know, of a research yeah mm -hmm and then begin launching it mm -hmm. and then beginning to and and what i really appreciate was they didn't say you're the intern so you can't mm. i would be the one sent out to go and stay with the designer mm. as they did their work mm. and obviously that provides such immense opportunities mm. to just learn mm. quality control and mm. things like that mm. and they would give me the whole and and that's the beauty about a, a flat organization mm. because you pick phones mm. And and it's not beyond the CEO to pick phones. Exactly. And when you say flat, you mean flat, there's I mean, no hierarchy. There's no. It was there, yeah. but it wasn't the, a big one. Very very huge. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so because of that, there was very easy interaction with the CEO, for example. Mm. And so because of that, you're in spaces where you're learning everything, you're absorbing mm. all this information. Mm. And I'm and I'm really glad for that opportunity mm. because obviously when it came time to transition. Mm. I remember the CEO called me and asked me, so should I pay you? When it came time for you to, to, to out like to of finish, the yeah, to okay. finish my internship. Right. right. And she said, Do you think I should pay you? Uh -huh. And that's the other thing. Because yeah. of lack of mentorship, right. I didn't know the answer to that question. Uh -huh. And so I say, I, I did the the I don't know whether it's a woman thing or a polite thing. Mm. I don't even think it's polite, but mm. I said, You assess my work and decide. Oh. And and she was very clear and she said, if you don't know your worth, I'm not gonna give you I'm not gonna tell you what your work is. And so she didn't pay me. And I so when I got out, one of the program officers just looked at me and said, You don't answer questions like that. You know, he was very forthright with me. 
but fortunately I got absorbed into the organization mm. because the person I was working with mm. um really was a mentor mm. and so she she would um take me along on mm. different mm. you know meetings before even you move now yeah i, I just want to see how th- that particular transition happens yeah so um how long have you interned for three months oh so the in, th- months. it was just a three month period yeah at, at this point um that particular transition from internship to absorption yeah um they absorb you as a what as an as a as an assist, program assistant as a program yeah. assistant yes. who's this person who So mm-hmm. so even if the organization was very flat mm-hmm. we still had a bit of a hierarchy okay. so peer was the lowest position yeah. in terms assistant. of programs yeah yeah um of course there was support staff mm. but not too many mm. and then you had assistant program officer then the program officer then the ceo so w- did there just happen to be a vacancy or was it created? there wasn't uh-huh. there wasn't a vacancy yeah. but because of my working relationship with my immediate supervisor who was who was Angela, Angela. and Angela was Angela who Angela Kitonga Kitonga all right so Angie was i say that sometimes you have mm. occasionally you meet angels walking on earth and mm-hmm. she she would fall into that category very easily because she was very gracious and mm-hmm. very kind mm. and in my not knowing she mm-hmm. didn't she would just sit back and show me what needed to be done corrected me very graciously mm-hmm. But she was also overworked mm-hmm. and overwhelmed because this mm-hmm. project was just now coming into full force. The futures project. In, yes, in yeah. terms of funding, in yeah. terms of now the work that needed to be done yeah. after that. Yeah. And so they needed help. She was the PO. She was the PO, yes. For the futures program. Yes, okay. and mm-hmm. she needed help. Mm-hmm. So I was coming in just at a time when the work was peaking mm. and she didn't say this girl is not an expert. Mm. She said she's very good help mm. and with with a little more coaching mm. she she can get there mm. so in a sense she made the the she put in my name mm. in a space where i wasn't mm. there to speak mm. for myself mm. and she didn't hesitate then to sometimes even do my work for me mm-hmm. when i didn't know mm. but then obviously my attitude was i have to learn and mm. i have to get going mm. so that allowed me to really mm. just grow that's, that's- pure mentorship and yes. that's that's and grace great. yeah because grace. organizations don't have grace mm. for not knowing mm. and yet i think there are people we dismiss that have yeah. a lot of potential yeah. just because there is an expertise i think yeah. the question is what's the balance yeah. Uh, yeah and and do organizations by investing in yeah. people yeah. lose money or lose yeah. time i don't know yeah. but for my case i mm. i speak as humanly as possible mm. it mm. was so beautiful yeah. that somebody gave me that kind of a chance as a beneficiary from it yeah. i mean yeah. you myself and uh, i mean it, it is how then we've got into the, we it, it, it was the as you as you speak now yeah. you're saying it's yeah. how you started your journey exactly yeah and and it was so powerful if you had been dismissed then you probably would have gone back to the drawing board i know and, and probably taken a different route yes and yeah. perhaps even landed mm. with the expertise you have perhaps mm. started really doing mundane mm. things mm. and mm. yet here was an opportunity to really mm. just stretch me completely out mm. of my comfort mm. zone mm. And so um I started learning what is futures mm-hmm. I started learning research mm-hmm. policy analysis how to have debates and conversations mm. around that mm. and that is what built my career mm. so then Angie eventually transitions mm. and my boss our mm. CEO transitions mm. and so I become the person in charge of the futures program I think you've moved too fast for <laughs> me <laughs> so yeah. you you joined as a program a- assistant, assistant. Yes. um what are the things that uh you begin doing with Angie okay. at the time you are helping her so yeah. that part i think i've gotten but yeah. what are those what does uh assisting her yeah. and so so that even mm-hmm. as you get to the place where you're picking up the project yeah. what how does your scope begin to increase and right. what are the things that, that you now do, do differently from the internship yeah. what are those things that you begin to do as your scope increases mm-hmm.